So has everybody had a good day? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've had all the hard ones. Now we're going to sit back and we're going to have some fun, talk about AR kit, all the latest hype. And what we're going to do is you've seen the hype for AR kit. We're going to add in core ML to do some understanding of what you can do. And then we're going to have core location to know where you are. So first of all, a bit about me. You, if you've seen that before, that's OK. If you haven't, that's OK too. I've been around for quite a while, got a couple Apple Design Awards. As a matter of fact, it was for AR kit type stuff back in the days when it took a week of work to do one minute of canned video. And it wasn't as good as the stuff that we're going to do on the fly here today. I'm at Trollworks on Twitter, and right now I work at agoda.com in Bangkok. And that's the important part. If any of you are looking for a job, and you'd like to live in Thailand, come see me after this, because I promised my boss that I would bring back three Russians. He's a Russian, his boss is Russian, we are all Russians, we love them, okay? So, AR kit. Everybody's heard the hype, right? Here, this is September 12th, just before it came out. In a matter of hours, the world will be buzzing with talk of augmented reality. It's got all the makings of a platform shift. Apple is essentially turning a light switch on. All right, even for BuzzFeed, that's over the top, right? So, then the iOS 11 came out, and people started actually using it. Two weeks later, eagerly downloaded it, anticipating AR magic, only to come away in a deep, personal trough of disillusionment. Now, why is this? All right, now let's go over what AR kit is just briefly. You have visual inertial odometry. That means that you have the camera, you have core motion, and it takes a scene, it takes the inputs, and it knows where you are. That's how things get placed. Now, what they call scene understanding is you can detect horizontal planes. That's it. We're going to have a scene understanding, which is real understanding for our first demo. But that's what they call scene understanding. And lighting estimation is you get some lighting. They do some tricky stuff with camera. So if any of you have downloaded Shark, the app, this is an example of what's on the top of the uh, charts now. You point it, a shark swims around. It's pretty funny for about 20 seconds. So. For that first wave that people are disillusioned, here's the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good apps are like Ikea and Lois. These, the one thing that AR kit as it is is good for, if you have an empty space with planes, and you have a well-defined object, and you move it around, then that's a useful app. However, the only thing that's useful for is furniture. Then you have the bad apps, the gimmicks. We have the ruler apps that sort of work, but not really. We have the object apps like Shark, where it swims around and like, whoa, that's cool, there's a shark in the room. And then 30 seconds later, there's still a shark in the room. And the drawing apps where you wave your hand around and you make a 3D object. Well, again, that's fun for like a minute or two. And then you have the ugly apps, which I call useless novelty. And these are things like catalog apps, and I don't know about you, but every single AR game I've tried so far, there is absolutely no thing, nothing that makes it better except it drains your battery. And people are telling you that catalogs and that kind of thing are going to be a big thing. I haven't attributed this because it's wrong. VR and AR will be the dearth of pop-up ads and pre-roll videos. Well, I can tell you it's not. See this over here? This is an app that I did back in 1999 when the hype over VR was like the hype over AR today. And this was when, what it was, was you took an object, you put it on a, on a rotating scheme, and you made a VR object out of it. And we marketed it as exactly what people are doing with AR kit today. We sold a couple thousand the first month, and then we sold about five a week. And people started realizing that there's too much effort, and it doesn't make any difference. So all the stuff you hear about that, don't believe it. So 
Having seen that, now that we've seen the first app, here's what you need to understand if you're going to make something that's going to be a sustainable business going forward. These are two people that really get it. But it's going to be a party trick until the reality side of AR, which I stole the, the uh, title of this from, is more than just a backdrop. And this guy here, he gets the, it too. Putting this even more strongly, smartphone apps are the default UX. Then your AR app should only exist if it does something that can only be done in AR. And these are principles to remember whenever you're thinking of doing anything in AR. So, how do we go about doing that? The three things that we are going to look at how to get started. With CoreML, we're going to understand scene content, the actual objects of the scene content, not just the planes to place things on. The next big step is core location. Where are we in the real world? We're going to talk about doing that with regular GPS and indoor location both. And putting those together, what we're aiming for is AR Cloud. Here's another great quote, a machine-readable, one-to-one scale model of the real world. Our AR devices are the real-time interface to this parallel virtual world, which is perfectly overlaid onto the physical world. And the closer you get to that, the closer you're going to get to something that actually changes the world. Okay, for those of you that missed the Core ML sessions earlier today, let's go over that very quickly. It's the equivalent of PDF for machine learning. So we have models, and we just load our model, and we feed it stuff. You've probably seen this from the, from the uh, Apple documentation. Underneath, we have the metal shaders for the vision. We have Accelerate and the neural network scenes. We have Core ML, and on top of that, what Apple provides you is vision. That's the one that we're going to be looking at in just another slide and also natural language processing and gameplay kit. So, here's one that you can write down if you're interested in the core ML models at all. GitHub.com, like Dan, awesome core ML models. We have image processing, and we are going to be using Inception V3 here. That's the one that gave me the best results when I was putting this demo together. The other things that you can do, images, text analysis, and so, unfortunately, I don't have my iPhone 10, so it's not actually going to be a selfie demo. But what we're going to do is we're going to use Inception. To, we're going to create an SK scene. That's the uh, scene sprite kit scene. We're going to load that Inception model. We're going to pass it the video feed. And we're going to make some anchors to show us some real world objects. So, the way that you create an anchor, we're by the way, all this is on GitHub. No need to even bother following it all that closely. But what we do when we have our scene kit and we touch it, we're going to figure out where it is, where the camera is pointing, and we're going to make an anchor just a little bit less than a meter out in front of where we're pointing. And then we're going to ask, once we create that anchor, it's going to come back to our view controller delegate, and it's going to say, we just created an anchor. Can you give us a, a, a sprite kit node to put on it? And we are going to create a label node with some text, and that text is going to be our vision thing that we got from vision. So, where is that vision thing going to come from? Do we have any sessions on vision? If we did, I missed them. But anyhow, it's fairly simple. We have vision requests. We need a queue to run them on, not the main queue, unless you want your app to skip horribly. And we're going to take our request that, first of all, we load the model. If you haven't used uh, Core ML yet, all you need to do is take one of those pre-trained models and you just drop it in your Xcode project, and it comes up with all the code you need. So Inception V3 there, that's just magically there by dropping it in. And we're going to create VN Core ML model is the one that gives us our vision classifier request to classify things. And you can see here, we give it that model, and we're going to call classified whenever we have something that's classified. And all we tell it is center crop because we want it to 
figure out what the object is that we're aiming directly. Take that classify request, put it in our request queue up there, and we call classify. And classify, as you can see, it just takes the queue that we created, and all it does, it updates the vision, and then it calls classify again. So what do we do with update vision? This is the big trick. It's not much of a trick, but you take the scene view, that's your sprite kit view again, you take the current frame, you make it into a CI image, and you pass it to vision. That's it. So once you have taken that, and it will call you back once it's classified stuff. And we do a few guards here to make sure that we have results that make some sense. And we're gonna take the first two results in our demo here, and we're going to do some magic here to make them into something that's a bit readable, take off all of, format the, uh, the certainty measurement and the confidence, and we're going to stick it on the main queue. We're gonna have a text that shows us what we're aiming at, and we're gonna take the first thing, and we're gonna make it that vision thing that you saw us make the label of about two slides ago. So, this is up on GitHub, and what we're gonna do in this demo is you're gonna see that model that you just saw the code to do. It's up there at the top, and when we tap on something, we're going to make a label of what it saw. You can see here in my apartment, we pointed it at my girlfriend's corner, it says it's a shoe shop. Pretty smart it is. So, here is where we go to our first demo. Let's just escape out of that, and... Here we are, everybody. And let's start this out by looking over here, and what's, what do you think this is? You can see in the top right corner that it knows it's a water bottle, which it is. So let's try something else. Let's try something a little harder. Let's try what it thinks this clicker is. What does it think the clicker is? Thinks it's a remote control. That's pretty good, eh? Let's try some audience participation. Hold something up. Stage. <laughs> well, it's pointing the wrong way. How about you, sir? <laughs> so what did I just say about live demos? <laughs> All right. Let's try that. There, you're, you look like a good one. Okay. You are an accordion, <laughs> sir. Ah, backpack. Now we're doing better. Well, that, it should know what that coffee cup is. Can you know that's a coffee cup? A ah, coffee mug. Very close. All right. So you see that already we have got something that's more interesting and understands more of the scene. More, even more important than understanding what kind of objects you're looking at are knowing where you are. We all know core location, it's in maps. What you might not know or have realized that just how much that it does use. Not only does it use Wi-Fi and GPS, it also uses Bluetooth, which is coming up as our indoor demonstration. It uses your magnometer, barometer, everything. So you have your regular location. When you have indoor, you have a floor, you have visits, you have regions, you have geocoder and place mark that we're going to go over just now, and CL location and CL beacon region, those are going to be our last demo, those are what help you get you inside with core Bluetooth. So, our next demo, AR world. This is, we're going to use core location that are outdoors. This time we're going to do a scene kit view and we're going to track our location. We're going to do a local search to, and we're going to add nodes that represent where the things we search for are in the real world. And all of the boring math part of this, there is up on GitHub a project, AR kit core location. So we don't have to go through a whole bunch of math that would be boring, you can just go there and find it. And they are in a very early stage right now. The big problem right now is that they can't get north reliably. There isn't enough uh, magnometer accuracy to be able to place things in the real world as well as we would like, which is why this demo only does things at a distance. But 
The theory is that once we are able to precisely locate things in the real world, we can remember where we had things and they can be placed there again. So, some more demos. First of all, we're just going to do a basic selection on some things that you might want to search for when you're in a new place, like for me, Moscow, for instance. And this is just regular, to, you can do a natural search on you know, anything really, but we're just going to pick these uh, predefined ones that I got good results on when I was trying this out. And it's, when we select one, it's gonna create this world view controller. What's in the worldview controller? The worldview controller is going to basically run a scene kit view, a scene location view. And the scene location view is provided by that GitHub project I showed you. It basically puts in all the support stuff to be able to give it something in a real world location and it'll find it. So here we create a location manager tell it that we want the best accuracy possible, start it up. Scene run, this is, if you haven't used scene kit before, this is what you do. You just run it and then you add it to the view controller's view. And then we start our locator and we call locate. What's in locate? In locate, we first of all, we check that we have a location and then we start an MK local search request. If you've never heard of that, that is our natural language query object. We give it the title that we just selected. We tell it that we want it to look for everything that matches that query inside five kilometers. Then we tell it, start. And eventually, we're going to get back a response with items, hopefully. And we tell it that we've located these places. And what it locates for each location, we're going to get an MK map item. The MK map item has a location. We give it the title, which comes along with it. And then we're going to create a place node. So that's a kind of scene kit node. That's again, this is a place node is something that we're going to do the drawing of, but all the location is handled by this by the scene kit. Uh, by the, by the scene kit additions that are provided by that AR kit plus core location library. And, you can, and that's the one that it provides, add location with confirmed location. Our place node, it's kind of location node, and we, it, it knows where it is. We're gonna create the node to display within that node, and we give it the location the string, and then we're going to add it. What are we going to add? We're going to figure out a width, a height, and a radius. We're going to create a plane. We're going to just, this is just going to be a kind of billboard because we're going to make this really easy. And on that plane, which is going to be a kind of billboard, we're going to put the title that came back from our request. And uh, that's basically it. Give it a billboard constraint to make sure that it always faces toward us on the y-axis. And it's demo time again, if this thing is still working. If this is an example off my uh, balcony in, in Bangkok, it's been a good party. We're looking for a hospital to take all the people to, and you can see all the hospitals that are within 5K of my apartment. So let's hope it works this time. AR World, let's look around us for some coffee shops. No, oh, in that direction we see coffee shop company. <laughs> in that direction we see a coffee house and coffee shop company and coffee shop company and coffee house. And don't you have any, there's no Starbucks in Moscow? Let's try banks. Can we find some banks? No banks that way. Oh, there's a bank over there. Bank Delta Credit. Oh, there's a bunch of banks. Ruski, yeah, okay, whatever that says. <laughs> And hotels, let's try hotels, just one more. And there's luxury collection. So you can see 
oh, th now we've got something that's actually useful. Like, this is what I'm going to do myself. I have so many apps that tell you where are things around you, and then you have to figure out on the map which way are they. Now, you see how if you actually have something that tells you, oh, this is in this direction, now we've got something interesting. Put a little, put the actual distance on there and figure out how you're to do a, uh, how, to, how, to, how to do, the, sorry, figure out how to get the location from maps as an AR object, and then you've really got something, right? So. Ooh, that's Inception-like. All right. Now, let me see if I can manage to figure out how to get this to not turn off again. There we go. All right. That was outside core location. Now, the actual, where we get to something that's going to be actually magical is when we have indoor location. That was the stuff you saw with the floors and the CL location, which is based on core Bluetooth. And this is something that has languished a little bit. If you go to, to figure out uh, stuff about indoor location, you have to go back to WWDC 2014 and Taking core location indoors. <laughs> iOS 8 makes it possible for an iOS app to determine its precise indoor position in supported venues. In supported venues is the trick here. You have to have mapping that's done with core Bluetooth to be able to do that. And can you go out and do that yourself? No, you cannot. You have to sign up with Apple to with Maps Connect because Apple is going to add all the data on your venue into the, uh, the maps data set for the entire world. And that's when you get things like the CL floor and stuff like that for navigation. And that is going to be difficult to add to regular maps. So what we're going to do for demo is we're going to use iBeacons ourselves. And this is where we get to, remember that we had that a vision of the one-to-one -one scale model? Now we're getting there. This is your vision. You have a globe-spanning network of Bluetooth beacons. We want everybody to be able to put their, we want everybody that does any kind of indoor SDK, any kind of indoor app, we want to be able to tie these all together the way we have open street maps. We want to have an open AR maps. And when you have your GPS location, your region and content query, we want to be able to download content that goes with that. We want to be able to have inch accurate positioning of our objects in the real world. We want motion tracking to tie our AR displays to physical objects. And of course, we want this to be available to Android via Eddystone and AR Core for those of you who like Android. That all sounds pretty magical, doesn't it? And we can do it today. We are, if you've ever heard of Estimote, they are people who sell beacons and they have a large cloud support that has almost everything we need. Here's an example. You see how you have a floor and they have all their Estimote beacons. This, this is what Estimote beacons look like. You put those and you can tell if you have enough of them, you can tell to within a couple of meters exactly where you are. I was originally going to try to demo that today because as you can see here on their blog, they posted Today, we're further advancing our integration with the iOS stack by adding ARKit to the mix. Our indoor SDK can now leverage Apple's breakthrough image processing and sensor fusion. The result of that integration is an inch level indoor processing precision. And that's great, isn't it? Works today, almost. So, today is the 27th, you can see on the 26th, Hi, Alex. Thank you for our, your understanding. We are still working on the issue. 
it might be the case that we will not be able to release an updated version by tomorrow. It's tomorrow. So, pro tip, never plan your presentation around an SDK that's still in development. So, here we are. I can't give you the in I can't give you the indoor location where I wander around and show things to pop up. So, what am I going to do instead? Well, I have the beacons here. Proximity still works. Even if I can't do that, I can do a simple game. So here we have a shot from last night in my very nice apartment where I've, uh, I've decided that that lemon is going to be a key. So we're going to do an adventure game here. Find the locked box, find the key, open the box and find treasure. When, the way that we do this, we take our Estimode app, we create an ARC, we create an app that's our demo. This was done with the proximity SDK. You can see the overlap there. And then we have all these beacons. They are all registered in the cloud. Remember when I said that we want to be able to download things from the cloud? Well, these guys already have that part of it built in. You have these things, you can attach data to them. All you need is a query that you can register and get them from. So we're going to start up our app. The app we just registered. And we know beacons. In this particular case, we are going to hard code a couple of beacons. Our candy A beacon is going to be a box, and our lemon A is going to be a key. Now, and in the real AR cloud, we would have our, the equivalent of the MK lo location search that we saw before. And it would tell you, instead of giving you a list of place names, it would give you a list of beacons. And then you could download stuff to go with them. In this case, our cloud manager and proximity manager are two things that we are going to pass them to. And then for this one, we're just going to make a set of what's in range. And we're going to do some zone views just to show you that the data we, we retrieve is actually being used. And our cloud manager, in our real demo, this would be something that gave us information about, say, shops, sales that are on. If we were in museums, it would give us information on the thing that we were looking at. In this particular case, we're just going to get colors. So we're going to show you the color of the beacon we're pointing at, hopefully. Our proximity manager. The EST you see there is the S-Mode SDK. We basically want to take all the stuff that they have. They monitor for, uh, for identifiers, which are all the things that we registered in the cloud. They give us a state for each of them. All we're going to do is we're going to find out which ones are in range, and we're just going to send off to our delegate the list of things that are in range, because that's all we really want to know in our app. So here's when we load our beacons info. The two beacons that we've got, we've got a list of our lemon key and our candy box we told before. And the fetch colors that you just saw, we're going to create little uh, UI views that show the color when they're in range, and that's it. So UI view, the background color is the color by beacon identifier that we downloaded from the cloud. We keep a reference to it, and we add it to our, to our scene kit view. And our proximity delegate, you saw that we created that from the raw SDK. It just tells us, we just look at it, there's our two key in box for each of them. If they're in range, we uh, show that the, we, we, if they're in range, we show their color and we make a list there for when we do our little simple game. Here's our game, the world's simplest adventure game. If you found a key and you found the box, and you tap it, you're going to create a node of the treasure. If you haven't found the box and you're in range of the beacon, we're going to create the box, which is locked. And if you haven't found the key and if you're in range of the key beacon, we're going to create a key. Otherwise, you see nothing. So let's. this is the last time we're going to have to go through this demo. If this will work, please work this. Nothing here. OK. Let's wander over around our AR kit world looking for some interesting objects. And we see over here, we have a beacon. And if you look up in the corner, you see that pink. That's our little sign that it 
connected to the cloud, it downloaded information, just our color. So if we look at that, oh, look, there's a box. We found a box, but the box is locked. So now we're going to wander over to the other side of the stage where we've stashed this lemon beacon. And you see that little yellow thing that says that now we're by the yellow beacon? Tap that. Oh, found a key. And now that we have a key and we found the box, if we look over here, we see that that box is still there where we left it. And this time we go over here and we tap on that box. All right. And there is your very simple example of how you can do an adventure game tied to real life locations within a few inches. Though we're hand waving a bit because this is just proximity. But if you do have the indoor SDK working, which we will next time for sure, then you could actually have these things pop up in the right place as, without you actually having to tap on it. So, no more demos, I promise. <laughs> so last thing, the other thing we're going to have if we were going to, if I had got indoor location, is besides the big, besides the big beacons, Estimote also provides these, these little sticker things. And what's great about these is these are not just broadcasters. These have motion sensing in them. So the plan that I actually had was that I was going to pick up one of these, which was going to be the key. I was going to show you bringing the key in the AR world over and having the box pop open. So in theory, that works now. In reality, well, you saw the letter from the nice estimate people. But it should work, and I no doubt by the time I get back to the hotel tonight, they'll say, yes, everything's working fine. All right. Here is an idea for put all these things together. This is one that I decided that I would really like on my way here, because coming from Bangkok by way of Kazakhstan to Moscow is quite a trip. Any of you that travel a lot, how would you like this? AR port. If there was a beacon, like we just showed you, at every gate, at every luggage carousel, put in your flight number. As soon as you walk through immigration, you get AR kit. It should, you just wave around, and it shows you where your gate is, gives you directions and a time distance. Whenever there's gate changes and a delay, it just appears on your screen. And like this happens to me a lot. I run to the gate after the, the plane has been changed, and I'm like, where is everybody? They've already, they've all went to the new gate. With this, you could just have it, hey, you managed to miss the announcement, go to this new gate. And if you wanted to, wanted to make some real money off of this, if I had one of these that was in my luggage, and whenever it came within core Bluetooth, I could say, oh, there's my luggage coming, that would be convenient. Even if they, because every so often it happens to me that my luggage comes out the conveyor belt that it's not supposed to be on. If you can see it coming or you know where else it is, man, I'd pay money for that. And the last way that you'd make money from this, sell, to, sell these to everybody that has a duty-free shop. They have everybody that has, that, that's uh, taxi drivers, anybody that has something that they want to sell, uh, market that. So we managed to go through, and I have managed to get through almost on time with the delays. Here are some more resources for you. Start out at developer, apple.com AR kit. They put up, they've been putting up new videos and stuff there. The big thing that I've had to skip over is face tracking with the iPhone 10. And you've probably seen the, the, uh, the, the video for the iPhone 10 introduction where they took the greatest technology of modern times and they made a talking poo emoji on stage, which if that isn't, if that isn't a s statement on the, w the world today, I don't know what is. But that's there for things that people are doing that are interesting, madewitharkit.com. Check that out. Everything that's interesting, every stuff that's not interesting, they usually have there. 
The big one that I really had to skip over was the AR kit core location stuff. Write that down, github.com, project dent, AR kit core location. If you're interested in all the math that goes into what you saw here waving around, that's where you'll find it. And the last demo, there are a number of people that do iBeacons. The people that are closest to being the foundation for the AR cloud, they are estimote.com. And everything that you saw here, just go to my GitHub and it's all there to download. And that's it, I have 57 seconds. Boy, did I ever time that well, huh? Last thing, like I said before, I work at Agoda. I got to come here on the condition that I would get three new Russians to come back and work for mobile apps. So if you do Android, if you do iOS, if you do neither, but you would like to live in Thailand, come up and get a business card from me. Spasiba. Thank you, Alex, and I think that all of you have enjoyed this talk, and uh, now it's time for questions. Um, and uh, as usual, we're going to give a prize, um, and you can improve your English with it. <laughs> yes, sir. No? Hello. So thank you for the talk. So the first question is like this. If you put this beacon, for example, in my backpack, will it detect it when it's Absolutely. not on the screen? Absolutely. Um, basically, it depends how much power you got them. If you turn them up to the highest power, they claim that they can be detected out to 200 meters, and they will be reliable at 120 to 150 meters. Okay, and if you want a person to find the key only when he opens the locked box, box so what are you going to do? If I, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, you showed us the key. Yep. And the you put it in the there. box, you yep. put the beacon in the box, yep. and you want the person only see this key only when he opens the box. I, How you are you going to approach just it? Just add some more layers of logic there. The only two that I had were found box, found key, because I was mm. writing this okay. at 9 p.m. last night <laughs> when I <laughs> finally decided that, you know, if they said, I want to set some expectations here, I'm like, yeah, so thank you very much for those expectations setting. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so we have more questions. <laughs> Sorry, I asked you in Russian. Oh, а, после, после выхода айбиконов они не сделали особо какой-то революции и в настоящий момент не особо популярны и не особо как-то Apple сама поддерживает и развивает на конференциях. Uh, so after the iBeacons were released, uh, they actually um, didn't cause a lot of attention and um, Apple doesn't uh, seem to be really developing it right now. Uh, как, как вы думаете, uh, возможно ли какая-то революция в будущем? Возможно, стоит ли нам ждать от Apple каких-то новшеств в индор навигации и в каких uh, сферах uh, приложения с, там, с индор навигацией и с AR будут наиболее популярны и именно вот useful? Okay, so uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, are we going to have some kind of um, revolution in this uh, direction? And um, is there a chance that uh, maybe this kind of navigation is going to be used in future? And if yes, then in which spheres particularly? Well, there's, th there's three things about that. First of all, you're quite right. You noted that, that uh, the, the most up-to-date information I gave you was from 2014. Apple has basically spun their wheels on it. The first reason that this is interesting is that while Apple spun their wheels, Google hasn't been. If you've heard of Eddystone, it's basically Google's answer to iBeacons, except it has a lot more interesting things you can do with it. And this is another reason to go with these guys that I would have gotten into if I had had a bit more time, is that these guys will broadcast both on iBeacon and Eddystone frequencies. And if you go to estimote.com and you look at the things they've done, there are a few big installations, like the biggest example that I can recall offhand is the Guggenheim Museum of Modern Art in, in New York City. And they basically do it uh, to do this kind of thing that I'm talking about, bring up AR kit stuff, except all they do is send out little notifications. See, this is one thing where I think that AR kit is something that adds so much more value that there will be uh, there, there will be a renaissance. Can can that be translated? A, uh, a what's what's a, what's a word that translates easily to Russian? A uh, 
a, it will be, it will become more important and interesting because this, because this is something where the AR kit experience is so much better than just the notification experience. When you can actually see a, a representation of an object, I think that's going to be something that people are excited about. The, like, think of the example I gave of the airport. If you, a beacon that says, oh, you're within range of your gate, that's not interesting. Holding this up and you see the sign that says, my gate's that way, or there's the sign pointing to where my luggage are. That's something that's exciting enough people are going to use it. So my answer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, for amazing presentation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Kirill. I'm uh, like uh, Core ML, AirKit, and uh, indoor navigation too. Um, but uh, what do you think about indoor Atlas? Uh, it's a framework uh, for navigation indoor with, uh, without uh, any beacon or any de uh, device. Uh, you can use uh, magnetic fields of uh, Earth for navigation. And what do you think about it? The precision is the trick. With regular, uh, like, like I gave you the, the, the first, the second demo there, the one where I just put the beacons in the places, the direction of them, those are accurate to within about maybe 100 meters if you're lucky. The thing when you add the eye beacons, as you saw here with just the proximity demo, I was within about two meters. If I had indoor location working, they say one inch. So if you can do better location than that, all you need to do is imitate the CL, CL location API, feed it in, and you're great. I uh, talk about uh, indoor uh, Atlas. It's a specific uh, SDK for navigation, and uh, occurrence of it about 10 centimeters. If you can do 10 centimeters, then you're up to any of the best stuff we have here. In that case, all you need to do is uh, uh, feed it in. You, you can do scene kit or, or uh, I, I use location manager, but basically where you saw me feeding that and getting locations, just feed in that instead. Okay, thanks. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely nothing that's tied to it. If you can get a position uh, and you put that in the interface to, to your scene kit view, that's all you need. And basically you uh, take the same math that I skipped over because it's up there on GitHub and apply that. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Yes, please. Hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, I want to ask you if, uh, what do you think? Uh, we now are developing the app that is using AR just similar to the the second example you showed, it shows the direction to uh, Wi-Fi points and uh, uh, just in AR. But as we started developing it in the May, so we didn't use AR, we use uh, Panic AR, it's an external framework. And now we're thinking of moving to the AR keys. So what do you think? It won't happen that maybe several years, um, two years or three years, Apple will decide that uh, the AR kit is now not very interesting and they stop uh, supporting it. See, that's where, that's one of the reasons I actually did this because I've been in this for so long. I have seen so many hype cycles and things die. I've, I was actually wanting to give people ideas for how to make things useful so that we don't have the reaction. You saw that trough of disappointment. Uh, if nobody comes out with something that's useful, yes, it will die. Look at, and look at AR core. Google basically, uh, they didn't get anywhere with whatever they called it before. So they filed off the serial numbers and, and uh, called it AR core to reply to AR kit. Um, matter of fact, I am really dating myself. I have been in this, when I first started this AR kit stuff, it was 1992, and I was, went to the second international conference on cyberspace, back when people still could say cyberspace unironically. So, if people bring out exciting apps, yes, it will get traction. If people don't bring out exciting new apps, it's going to be where this fellow over here, he pointed out iBeacon is just spinning its wheels. 
Yes, that very well could happen. So, do I have an actual prediction? No. Did I come here to give you guys great ideas to take over the world and make sure that doesn't happen? Doing my best. Okay, one more question. Okay, thank you for your speech. Um, in the last game, uh, you use uh, uh, eye beacons for determine where, uh, determine where a box uh, or a case. I think in, uh, when you, in case of internal navigation, we can use uh, simple QR codes to de define where we at the, our home, for example, at the what's maybe at, at what place in the room, and even we can define how we um, how we stay relative to. This, to this place because QR code has a specific form and uh, we, ca uh, we can estimate how I stay near his QR code. So uh, it, it's not required to use uh, old iBeacon technology that not supported. So anyway. <laughs> he wins best question. Yes, you are quite right. Did you catch that part where I had the uh, sample for, or no, we can't have it fixed for tomorrow? Yes. My demo there, it does indeed fall under the, uh, the, the worst sin, that of doing something you don't need AR kit for. The actual demo that I'd hoped to when I said, Cat, y'all have the best demo ever, I was going to have the entire room mapped out so that I was going to walk over and when I hit an exact position that I, that, that, when I hit an exact position, the, the chest was going to pop up by itself. And then I was going to walk over and pick up one of these that was going to be the key. And I was going to walk it over and the AR object key would follow this. And when I got over to where the chest was, the chest would pop open by itself. And that would be a demo that you couldn't do without AR kit. But, oh well. At eight o'clock last night, when I got that email you said saying, I want to set expectations, it's not gonna to work tomorrow, I said, well, what can I do that sort of gives you the idea? And that's what you got. Okay, I think that's the last question for today. Hi, Alex, thank you for your speech. You're As I know, Bluetooth devices have a, a huge power consumption. And if a lot of people uh, come to this beacon, uh, we have a lot of handshakes with Bluetooth devices. We get the Mac ID, something like that, and drain the battery. On real life, if we have a New York museum or something like this, is it hard to maintain uh, every beacon? I think on one day we, we should uh, refresh this address on the website of uh, this part, and uh, a lot of people should uh, check the battery life and update Mac addresses on the website to work well. Yep. First off, these are actually Bluetooth low energy because you are perfectly right, Bluetooth is an energy hog. That's why they created Bluetooth LE. The trick is, is that this does not actually handshake itself. With Bluetooth low energy, all it does is it broadcasts a packet every 200 to 500 milliseconds and you receive them. So it, it has no idea who's listening to it. That's the big trick. And how much power you put in and how frequently you broadcast, those are the other tricks. If you give it the maximum power and you go every 200 milliseconds, which is uh, the most that they recommend you bother with, it's the, the watch battery in here will last about six months. Now, if I, when I do this for, for real, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not bother with Estimote myself. I'm gonna buy the chip, the, 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 the chips that are inside these, if you don't wanna write the back end, they cost about six bucks. So what I would do is I would put those in basically a USB adapter and I would plug them in if I had a fixed location like I was talking about for the airport one. Because they don't take that much, but yes, they take enough that it would be a big maintenance cost. So if you're doing, if you're doing a, a if you're, doing a, a, if you're doing a big fixed install, you'd want to do something other than these. You're quite right. 
Okay, thank you. So thank you, Alex, very much for your insightful and uh, super interactive presentation and talk. Uh, thank you all guys for all the speakers, moderators, and uh, you as participants for making this day so cool. We're actually at the end of our conference, um, uh, but I think that Alex will still be happy to answer some other questions if you have yep. some, um, just chatting with you. Друзья, всем спасибо большое. And don't forget, come to Thailand. <laughs> I promised oh. my boss three more Russians. <laughs> Uh, by the way, we still have to give a present. Um, yes? Uh, the guy there who quite accurately pointed out okay, that I was welcome. violating my own rules, prize. he wins. <laughs> <laughs>